this is the basis on which we also have based the little season. In during this period of he spent in the wilderness, he was fasting and praying. Two facts which we try to understand is fasting and praying, which we will try to go through later also. Fasting and praying is necessary to receive the power of the Holy Spirit from God and for us to function powerfully in the ministry. This is one aspect in which I am Spirit, the Holy Spirit tells us the physical act of fasting and praying does not transform us. Only when we have the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, can we be transformed into a powerful person and we can do wonders or miracles with the help of the Holy Spirit. That's not in the yes. This is the first thing I also wanted to share with you. The second thing is the book of Romans. The book of Romans, so far, we have come into the chapter 1. As the synopsis of the book of Romans, I would like to just present it before you. It begins with facts from the gospel that Paul tries to share with us. Then he also shares the good news, the salvation that is available to all, regardless of a person's identity, sin or heritage. We are saved by grace, unearthed, undeserved favor from God, good faith. The baptism process we found that Jesus had his faith in God the Father. We have to base our faith on Christ through the Holy Spirit. And also, Paul speaks about freedom that comes from being saved. Freedom from the power of sin, freedom from the domination of the law, freedom to become like Christ and discover God's limitless love. And God also has made a way for Jews and the Gentiles to be united in the body of Christ. Both groups and praise God for His wisdom and love. This is the book of Romans in a nutshell. Acts of the Gospel, the good news, the salvation, the freedom which comes from being saved and how we are to behave after we receive this freedom. This is the book of Romans in a nutshell. Now, this book of Romans was written by Paul as a statement of faith, as I said earlier. Here also we see, as in the life of Jesus, which I shared with you earlier, here we see the life of Paul. Saul is converted to Paul. Again, we see a transformation. Only after this transformation did Paul write this book. He wrote 13 epistles, the first of which was his book of Romans. The other well, well, letters to the various churches, the Church of Corinth, the Shire Cases, and other churches which he wrote. This book of Romans reflects his experiences he went through during this process of transformation, this during this process of his conversion from Saul to Paul. How did this happen? On the way to Damascus, he was met by Jesus. Jesus spoke to him and asked him why he was persecuted. And he became blind and he was to the Pavetal house and he was there for three days. We see from Acts chapter 9 that 
during this period he was in prayer and during the prayer he had a vision in which he was shown how Ananias will come and restore his sight and also we see that the Lord spoke to Ananias also that he wanted Ananias to lay his hands on Paul and anoint him so that he may be restored the sight may be restored here also we find that he was anointed by the Holy Spirit during the verse Acts chapter 9 we see that he was anointed by the Holy Spirit first case also we see the anointing of the Holy Spirit from God the Father to Jesus here the faith of Paul Saul in Jesus Christ through the prayer and he was also had not taken any food he was also fasting so fasting and prayer we see here also so through faith in Jesus Christ and through the anointing of the Holy Spirit he also received the power so from Jesus Christ and he started his ministry after that and through this ministry we have got this the book of the Romans so the common factor which we find here in both these cases is the transformation from a day and though Jesus was sinless he was also transformed through the power of the Holy Spirit and Saul after he repented and he received the Holy Spirit he was also became righteous and he was able to continue to do his ministry. The period of during the period of Lent, for the process of this transformation, is usually characterized by three attributes. One is, as we have seen in the case of Jesus, we have seen in the case of Saul, fasting, praying, and in the case of Jesus, it was the word of God. The Satan tested him with the word of God and how Jesus defended himself with the word of God. So, what is this fasting? We will try to understand. Fasting is usually in the physical sense abstaining from food that we all follow during this business. Something which we learn that God will take it or on anything we speak and because choosing to go without something reminds us to depend on God and Jesus sacrificed for us and teaches us to live in solidarity with the less fortunate. Many people give up something for them, which is also a form of fasting. This is the, as I said, what we do physically, but in a spiritual sense, we can talk more about fasting. Isaiah 58, verse, which is, which has gives us uh, an idea of. True fasting. I will read you verses 6 and 7 from Isaiah 52. Is not this the fast that I choose? Those the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke. To let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the poor to pour into your house? When you see the naked, to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh. 
you can go home and read the full chapter and maybe you will be able to understand what pastor is, the true sense that we need to need for our transformation during this period of event. The second thing is prayer. Can we say prayer is just the utterance of words from our lips? We will constitute a real prayer. In a physical sense, yes. But what, what, how can we understand prayer fully? 1 Thessalonians 5 17 says, pray continually. There's two verses in that, two words in that verse, pray continually means you are to be in prayer 24 by 7 as we on the model given to us by Jesus the wilderness all of us are in the sky for the day of days how do we pray continually 24 by 7 can we do it to the lips and the mouth is it possible to human do is it is it's not possible what he means all means by prayer in this verse. We have to pray in the spirit. Though we may be doing some other work, you have to be in prayer through your spirit. The spirit of man to commune with the spirit of God. That is the real prayer. That 1 Thessalonians 5 23 says, body, soul, and spirit lips with your body, the soul and your spirit comes with the spirit of God. It is called the real prayer. Romans 8.16 says that spirit of God speaks to the spirit of man. We will go through this verse we find that. And I will read to you from Romans 8. Verses 26 and 27 will give you an idea of what daily prayer is. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray or as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. So the Spirit knows how to intercede for us in prayer in accordance to the will of God. So this is the real prayer, asking in prayer physically and spiritually constitutes what we need for our transformation from the unrighteous to the religious. And another aspect of the Lent is arms giving. This is usually the practice found by the Catholics mainly uh, something which is necessarily have to do during the Lenten time. Of course, in our tradition, we have the self-denial offerings which can be constituted as arms giving in a certain sense. These aspects of the Lent, that is fasting, prayer and asking, are followed in different forms, the different churches and the different denominations. Catholic Church, if the religious practices are more ritualistic, in our church we devote our time to the study of the Word of God. So these three things we do need in our lives for us to transform to a new place. Doing these tendencies as we meditate on this, 
he will have to transform to a new person. This he did not end at the end of the 40 days. He can continue it. be a transformed person to live according to the will of God. Now coming to the verse for today's meditation, I will read it to you once again. Two, one, the God's righteous question. Therefore you have no excuse for man, every one of you who judges, for in passing judgment on another, you condemn yourself, because you, the judge, practice the very same things. Now what does Jesus have to say about this? We find it in Matthew chapter 7 verses 1 and 2. And then you give it. Judging others, judge not that you be not judged, for with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. We also find a similar verse in Luke 6, chapter 6, 37 and 38. Judging others, judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, press down, shake them together, running over. We will, will be put into your lap, or with the measure you use, it will be measure back to you. As we go through this verse, a good example of how we judge others will be, as I would like to say, the practice of gossiping. When others talk about us, we call it gossip. But when we try to talk about others, we try to justify it, saying that it is necessary. That is what God is trying to talk about you and which is something which we need to give up during this season for our transformation. An answer to this we will find, we can find in James chapter 4, 11 and 12. James chapter 4, 11 and 12. Do not speak evil against one another, brothers. The one who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks evil against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law but a judge. There is only one lawgiver and judge. To this, I think I would like to close and the transformation which we need we have gone through fasting, prayer which we need to do is correct along with our physical things that we pray Father God we come to you at this time as we have meditated upon your word that you have opened a mind school, the transformation that we need in our lives through this, through this period of Lent. Help us, God. We are weak in our flesh. We do not know what we want. But give us from the Spirit who implements for us on our behalf according to your will and plan.
plan and purpose for our life. Blessed and guide us. We ask this all in the most precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.